Hello everyone, Zap here and welcome to the Season 14 Way Guide. I've been waiting a little bit to make this because the new items had to settle down a little bit. A lot of changes, a lot of shifting sands. Recently, Way was also disabled and he got the last batch of buffs. Turns out Way is really good. He's really, really good. He has been hindered quite a lot recently due to very bad reputation, no C-boy effect. People would think he's bad, so they would play worse with the teammates who played him. Even still, it's very, very difficult to pilot Way in a comp with clueless players who don't know how to play around him so that definitely presents a decent challenge but Vey is super good right now I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do this also has been approved by uh, Vey's designer shout out to Riot Emissary thank you for making this incredible character so first let's go with the summoner spells very very obvious in general you want to be running ghost almost always ghost completely fixes the character everything wants it to you you're super squishy so you really gotta put them at arm's length and you gotta play that control play style so this is how you do it you play it with the ghost and they are basically two sets of runes you can run i'll show you the main one so we're running first strike first strike is very good most of the times you're the guy who's first engaging so you really get high value of this uh you accelerate your build first few items and then you absolutely pop off you will get quite good value from it very very useful triple tonic ever since the recent buffs is very good now first of all triple tonic is always good because it fixes your early game with the first tonic level three second tonic level six is basically you get for 60 seconds 400 gold value in ap you get basically 20 ap which is it comes at a perfect time around your ult combo and usually you will lack just a little bit of damage of killing people so it comes at a perfect time that you want to get level six power play trust me on this try triple tonic it's going to be very very cool and here's a kicker the best part of why we take this is on level nine you get your e to rank three so your maxing order will always be the same your leveling order can shift a little bit and explain you why but generally you always max q then e then w and here on level nine because of the extra skill point you have rank three of e uh your e scales phenomenally well you get damage you get lower cooldown you get duration now is longer of your fear as well as the root so essentially making your combos that much more reliable one whole level earlier and that's why we're running triple tonic as good as the future market is i think minion dematerializer really helps you out you can get insane wave control you can basically delete waves with just two abilities and cosmic insight obviously because it, it works with the ghost pair up and flash you have so many of these abilities all the time right the summoner spell haste is incredible and press of mind fixes our mana early game because as long as we're hitting people we're going to be refunding that mana and takedowns are going to be extremely good because we will be part of a lot of kills later on and coup de gras is the key here because we're playing on a qw synergy you'll see many many highlights of this happening and that's exactly what happened in the last few games the trick is we're running these synergies and you'll, you'll see why with the build also because we're operating on this execution threshold coup de gras is going to do bonus damage on 40 percent and below you will have your first strike at a time so that's going to proc because you're the guy hitting first all you have to do is q w and w e real fast and that way we are just beyond broken so here's essentially how the build goes so early game you start with the dorn's ring you pivot into lost chapter obviously we rush malignance ludens is all right i like it it even enhances your qw a bit more in certain scenarios i just think malignance is too good for its money it also gives you more ultimates and now more ultimates means way more for you it always was his key ability to survive in difficult scenarios and set up big plays but now your ult is a bit easier to land due to the recent buffs it's very very nice and you really want to spam that also it synergizes perfectly well with lowering the magic resistance and doing the bonus damage you really cannot go wrong with malignance you can build this in every single game and you can't go wrong and the best part is the shadow flame so now we get the shadow flame and this very kicks in with the presence of mind so you get the shadow flame with the presence of mind and both of these are gonna synergize so damn well that you're gonna execute everything you land there are so many different moments in these games where i don't think i'm gonna get a kill but it actually winds up being a kill it's so superb and it catches me off guard i'm playing the champion now imagine how it catches off guard people who are playing against it and don't know exactly what it does so it's superb it's superb the snowball potential of that is so good the control later on you even start doing crazy damage without people being low this is a phenomenal thing to run after after shadow flame we don't go storm surge I, I was experimenting a little bit storm surge is an absolute bait i just wanted to reassure myself that it is still i really thought that way before but it, it still is we don't go storm surge almost ever unless you're playing versus like 580 carries or some shit so ideally you want to get the malignance into shadow flame into death cap obviously you have to go penetration boots always you will rarely die as you can notice from these games i barely have any deaths if you play the controlling playstyle, it goes very well despite enemies having plenty of things that can kill you you don't 
don't tend to die a lot. So picking up Dark Seal is a good thing. You can even get it into Magi's if, if you're feeling comfortable. But essentially, here's how you pivot in the late game. If they have tanks and you're struggling to deal with tanks, you can go into Horizon Focus Lion Race. Those two items paired up with this is going to synergize really well and the tanks are no more. You just delete everything. If you seek optimal mathematical damage, third item is going to be Death Cap. It's difficult to buy, so I will tend to go into another alternator uh, right after Shadow Flame for a little bit of more damage and more spike. But if you can, you go for Death Cap. And if you're dealing with tanks, you want to go Landry and Horizon and it just gives you so much control, especially now after the Horizon buffs. It also gives you more consistency with the haste. It gives you pretty good AP for the money you're paying. What I said about the level up order, you can now afford to not go W always. So what I mean by that is generally your leveling order is Q, then W, like level 1, level 2, and then level 3 you get E. Now, you have, again, more options. You can get Q, E in tough matchups. Let's say you're dealing with Aurelia. Aurelia can jump on you. You can get Q and then E for safety and then W third. You will still not run out of mana, especially because of presence of mind. You can handle that and you basically don't die. I think we do the same thing in the Silas matchup because Silas matchup is the matchup that kills you level 2. Level 2, it goes crazy. If you have E, you're super safe. Uh, if you're playing versus casters, you can also start with E because E is only 50 mana and now it's lower cooldown. Versus Syndra, you can get E because that way you can hit her through the wave. Otherwise, she gets an advantage. She hits you through the wave, you don't hit her. But if you can walk up and just E her, uh, you win. Like, E. -E. Anyway, those are like the, the, the pivots at the start, but you always max Q, then you max E. So we have sold basically everything for the character right now. We got the runes, we got the summoner spells, we got the items that all synergize with each other. He has a role to play. The most mage mage, right? He's the best control mage because he's got so many different spells, but you've really got to use them at the right times. So you can enable your team, you can save them a little bit, you can play a bit of utility, a little bit of wave clear, but in general, you're playing that pick off poke and that's your bread and butter. That's how you get the impact across and that is coincidentally the best way to actually get the impact on the games because you just crush enemies before the fight begins nothing saves a baron fight better than not having the baron fight if you can pick somebody off right before you win by default same for the dragon and the best strategy to win games is basically to avoid team fight completely by actually winning it before it begins okay so now i'm gonna show you a few spots where you want to hunt uh your ew is no longer like a crazy tool it doesn't really catch too much of the brush. Using it for these brushes is all right to check for ganks, but you're really not gonna catch anyone. This is possibly the best place you can hit. This completely cuts off the entire rotation right here. If you can pull these off, it's phenomenal. You can land that into root, and you just kill people. You completely destroy them. Even if you don't kill them, you get absolute control. That's one of the, the good ones. Obviously, this is still one of the tight areas, because now mostly it's wide. You will not be able to, to get crazy good situations here. Let's say if you're red side, this is the obviously one. When you want to control, you're placing vision. In my older guide, this is what the one that I thought is going to be really, really good, and it actually is, because this is, as it turns out, in Dragon Fight's the most difficult brush to control vision wise so your ew is gonna be insane there this one obviously to cut off rotation let's say your team is here you have vision here and you're worried of a flank you always do this one it allows you to have so much safety so how your combos is gonna go you play a lot with q right now because your q suddenly deals a lot of damage and you will be playing with q you don't have to panic we always but it is pretty good it's a it's a default ability but you don't have to do it all the time so generally you try to pro people and if you know your Q is landing, you can do mid-air W3 or WE, whatever you prefer. So as soon as that's landing, you see it goes, you do that one. As Apart from the lane control, as we talked in the guide uh, for V combos, essentially you will be picking people off with... Now, EW is much, much better. Either it's going to be that, or you're going to be doing EQ. And now, EQ, also, duration goes to 1.5 max rank, which is why we're also leveling it up. And see how much that one level up just means. Like, when you get one skill point from this. That one level up is going to net you extra 40 damage and longer root duration and everything. Yeah, that's how you get kills. You do that one, that one. And then they have flash, you hold on. And also one cool trick is you always wait. Let's say enemies are suffering away with the ult on top of them. You will be waiting. Because during your ult, you can't cast two Qs. There's not enough time. Unless you do like a fight Q. And then let's say you fear. Then you ult. And then you can do another one, right? 
Unless you do it like that, that's fine. But if you land your EQ ult, don't use Q. I mean, if enemies are going to run away and you can have execution, sure, do it. But more often than not, you will not have execution at that point. Because unless you're really fed. And in that case, you wait right at the very end of your ult. And as soon as the ult ends... Uh, let me show you. See, this is what was going to be happening. That's how we time it. We time it like that because enemy is going to be maximally slowed. So without flash, he's going to get hit guaranteed. And even with flash, there's a high chance it gets hit. Especially if you time it very well. Secondly, your execution is going to do so much more damage right after. I don't know if you can test this here. Like, let's say you do this and then you hit before. 200, 400, right? If you time it at the end, your QW is going to do much, much more damage. So you really want to make sure your ult does the work to maximize the damage. And that's how you get the picks. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to show you. This is really, really the map specific stuff right now. And like nothing too crazy. If you're really looking for more combos, you should just check out my combo guide. I've done the calculations on vague combos and all potential combos, essentially. Uh, that's gonna guide you a little bit, but the best way to learn is through empiricism. Uh, you can know all the theory behind Vey, all the 1044 combos, whatever. But unless you play it and get it feeling in your hands, like, it, it's not gonna stick, so... I, I recommend just remembering a few combos and then going in a game and trying them out immediately. Because then your muscle memory is just gonna... Your muscle memory is gonna stick. I'm telling you, this champ is too good right now. It will probably get nerfed. So I say abuse while you can. Until people catch up. Because the win rate will still be lagging. Due to a lot of people experimenting with the builds. A lot of people are really not that good. Not that experienced with the champ. And again, the bad feeling of the champ. Because he was so weak for so long. People still disregard him completely. So you have surprise effect as well. Um, Yeah, that's about it. That's about it for the Vey guide. If you have any extra questions on Vey. Feel free to pop in the stream and ask me anytime. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, everyone.